Greetings gamer guys and gals, welcome to part number 35 of my Let's Play Fire Emblem 5 Thracia 776, and in today's episode we're going to be finishing up some straggling things we must take care of. We do have, at the bare minimum, one more full turn to deal with because of just how everything is in this game. Um... Mm, I almost don't want to attack with Linowin there. I don't want to be... Well, it doesn't really matter if she's hit. 19. He's only doing 7 damage if he does hit. And then we can attack with Jormungandr. Actually hitting straight away with that. Pretty nice. And then, we can trade that rewarp, take, we're going to need to heal Marita, as her cost is actually proving quite the difficult issue this current moment. Um, we can actually take Dean and drop here. And, man, I kind of want to heal up Edda here. But our physic is on Linowin. Alright, so we'll have to take care of that. Would be quite terrible to see her go so soon. Um, so even though that wasted experience necessarily, it's... Whatever. You know, what can we do? Alright. I'm not surprised that he wants to attack Marita, but especially because she doesn't have a ranged weapon at this current moment on her, but honestly... Still don't think that's all that great of a decision on your part. Oh, Latrian. Flame and failure! We actually made it! Here, take the stamina drink and toast to your heroics today! I appreciate all these stamina drinks. This is why I don't buy a lot. Just letting you know, this chapter is worth going to, and stamina drinks are a bit too expensive to be buying a bunch of them, so if you want, you can obtain them in many other ways. We made it out alive. Why, I was afraid the long line of Taurus esteemed stamina drink venters would die in this for forlorn valley. What's that? All stamina drinks taste the same to you? Well, you simply have an uncultured palate. Take this one, for instance. It's called Celestian Spring, and it's brewed at a vineyard near Tofa. Savor that beaut heady aroma, that tart yet sweet aftertaste. You'll never look at stamina drinks the same. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we might be within range of being able to escape with all of our units this turn, which would be pretty awesome. Let's see if our flyers are. Okay, they all are. So... We're going to start escaping then. And of course we're going to be skipping all of the nonchalant speaking of our units. Because what's the point? Most of them do just say virtually the same thing every single time. It's not important for story. It, I think they're cute little nods. I definitely think they shouldn't be a thing in every chapter. Especially like the same quote. Like, you're always going to see Karen say pant, pant, and then, um, well, she doesn't say pant, pant, but she pants. And then, you know, anything else that she would have have to say in that, oh, I'm escaping now, you know, I'll be, I'll be going. <laughs> we understand, we know. Oh, wow. Um, trade. 
Asbel almost wasn't able to escape this turn. Wouldn't have mattered. Leaf and Asbel could more than um, handle themselves in this entire chapter by themselves. And... Linowin's escape. And then we have, of course, Leaf. Finally, you have to make sure that Leaf is within the escape, escape tile. <laughs> oh, yeah. Funny things have, uh, have occurred before, you can tell. It seems we've cheated death yet again. Our forces are all clear of the valley, sir. God's breath, what a relief. Now, what should be our next course of action? I'd advise crossing over the Dolph Mountains to reach the road to Nordheim. The road to Nordheim? So you propose that we make our way to Leonster along the coast? That's my thinking, yes. But I've not yet heard Augustus' opinion on the matter. At any rate, we'll have to cross this mountain range regardless of which route we take. We should make haste, Prince Leaf. A moment of your time, Augustus. L L Lord Lewin? How? How were you able to find me so quickly, Your Highness? We've been through much together, you and I. I know how you think. When I heard Tara had fallen, I anticipated this would be the route you'd take to escape the city. It seems I was correct. And with their defeat, Leaf's army now faces a crisis of purpose. You certainly have your work cut out for you. It seems I was not up to the task. I'm sorry for disappointing you, Your Highness. Oh, don't kid yourself. Tara's capitulation was inevitable. We both knew this. You've been doing a fine job. If you say so, Your Highness. Now, if there's no other matters of import, I must be going. I still have to check in on the Orga Hill region before returning to Isaac. It will likely be another year before we're able to meet like this again. Until then, I leave things in your capable hands, Augustus. Another whole year. There's still mo so much time left to be done. So much to be left to be done. <laughs> Not time. Abiding by the armistice brokered by Arian and Linoan, the Liberation Army withdrew from Tara. Their next goal was a matter of same de some debate. The Fianna Freeblades and the Magi wished to make for the castle Munster and liberate it first. While the nobles of Leonster and the Sellswords of Tara favored liberating Castle Leonster first, ultimately pragmatis uh, pragmatism prevailed, as it was agreed that seizing Leonster first was more advantageous to the army's mobility. However, Leif would soon have to make another strategic decision. And this is a very interesting map, um, considering that on said map, you have two routes, a an A and a B route. Um, you can even visit the uh, church, particularly. You don't have to go through these, these uh, little side routes. You actually kind of want to do this for the recruitment of specific units. Um, or a specific unit. Well, no, it is two specific units, actually. Um, it's just best to go to the church um, and visit it with Leaf so that you can make your decision regardless. However, if I'm not mistaken, visiting the church ends the, ends the chapter. This is basically an arrive chapter with Leaf either on the church or any of your units on these tiles. When you arrive, you finish the chapter. Um, there's several different things we can do. For one, we have to defend these villages, um, as well as there is a vendor. There is a bunch of enemies we have to defeat. Um, there is continual reinforcements, houses to visit, um, and there's even a hidden character that shows up at a certain turn we're going to be visiting because we need said character in order for Merida to gain a specific skill. This is the boss of this chapter, Sale. And he's kind of a daunting one, I would say, if it weren't for the fact that usually I just allow Marita to utterly <laughs> destroy him. Um, we are even going to be getting some green units that can help us out a little bit. Um, it's F 
far and away best to get up as far as you possibly can in this chapter before the green units die to these enemies because Sale, for instance, he is mighty strong compared to the green units that uh, join you this chapter. Now, he does have a follow-up critical modifier of zero, so you don't have to worry about him critting you on his second attack, but being honest, uh, it's still truly a dangerous chapter to be a lance wielder let's just put it that way then again the forest and the uh, thickets over here uh, can kind of help you a bit keep you out out of danger and keep you kind of safe um, but as I have been doing lately I'm going to be refraining from showing the management of items and skills and all those other things and blah 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 uh, at the beginning of the chapter just because it would take too long these it would add another 10, maybe 15 episodes onto this Let's Play. Let's be real. I'll show the items, of course, and who I'm bringing, but until then, I'll see you later. And I am back. So these are the units that we are going to be bringing here. You definitely want to make sure that you are well prepared. Um, I am going to be bringing Marita. I had to use a stamina drink as she is quite fatigued right now. Quite fatigued. Marita must come to this chapter in order to get a secret skill with her, so she's going to have even more skills than this, which is kind of uh, <laughs> a little bit crazy to think about. Uh, Marita is one of the most, in my opinion, busted units in this game. She's definitely the best growth unit in this game, in my humble opinion, um, because of what's ac what she has access to, you know, a sword master, good movement, vigor star, good growths, um... A fantastic preferential weapon, as well as a bunch of skills that are all her own. Adept, which is the class skill she gets for being a Swordsmaster, but then a cost. And Luna, I mean, I gave her a cost, but still, Luna is pretty incredible. And then the skill that she gets in this chapter kind of, like, makes it so that she doesn't really need <laughs> a cost, but I give it to her anyway because I think it's funny. Um... And we do want to make sure that we deploy in such a way that we can get across the mountains with our middle force. Um, so let's go ahead and deploy. Chapter 15, Two Paths. Prince Leaf, a moment if I may. I would advise heading west at the pass up ahead to ro reach the road to Nordheim. And it is on this matter that Duke Dorius and I are of different minds. I instead argue heading east at the pass. That route will allow us to attack Leonster from the south, where the Empire's defenses are sure to be weaker. Clearly you aren't well acquainted with the area. If you were, you'd know that Mulefell Forest lies to Leonster south. That the place is synonymous with folks getting lost and never returning. Hell, the locals even call it the Mirage Forest. Don't patronize me. I'm well aware of the dangers, but so is the Empire. They won't be expecting an attack to come from such a treacherous area. With our smaller numbers, making clever use of the terrain is our only hope of victory. That's just basic tactics. I must strenuously object. All of Thracia, no. All of Jugdral's wa wa watching our battle. This is about more than victory. We cannot merely win. We must win in such a way that gives inspiration and hope to the masses oppressed by the Empire. Are we to skulk through the woods like common bandits? Nay. We have to make a glorious spectacle of it, charging into battle with Leonster's flag held high. Such a spectacle would indeed be glorious for the Empire. We'd be charging right into their front lines. Our casualties would be enormous. Some of our own would perish, true. But it would be an honorable death worthy of a knight of Leonster. Don't presume to speak for all of us, Duke Dorius. Only a small fraction of our troops are knights. Many more hold no title. To them, your notion of an honorable death is ne something neither meaningful nor desirable. See that you don't get innocent men killed by projecting your own values onto them. That's uncalled for, Augustus. Your very words come perilously close to an insult. <sighs> Though I suppose there's little point as to us arguing further. The decision rests with Prince Leaf now. Indeed it does. We shall do as the Prince commands. The 
Boss, boss, I got a great idea. Let's head up that there village today. What the hell, Slum? It's just a couple of lean-tos in an outhouse. They don't got nothing worth stealing. Hey, burning the place down might actually be an improvement for them villagers. They might not got anything value, but they do got girls. Real pretty girls. We can, we can just snatch them up and sell them to slavers. It'd be an easy payday. Huh? You might be onto something, youngin. All right, let's do it. Move out, boys. Round up all the lady folk and kill everybody else. This is an interesting chapter. So, like I was hinting to earlier, this is an arrive chapter. Either you arrive with any one of your units on any one of these, uh, either one of these blue tiles, or you arrive with Leaf at the church. Um, if you arrive to the tile at the at the east you go to Mealfell Forest or the Mirage Forest, which is the B route. This route gives you a lot more items, lesser units. You get two units from going the B route and two units from going the A route. They are exclusive to those routes. Um, and the units in the B route are not as good, but the items are way better. Like for instance, the Vouge, there's the Wind Sword, there's several other things like that that you can get that route that you can't really find or get anywhere else. And that Vouge is non-preferential. You could use that with any of your axe wielding men. Um, so, uh, frankly, it's really a matter of decision. The B route is also a little bit easier, but also more annoying. Whereas the A route is more difficult, but more straightforward. Um, the A route, Nordheim, to the left, is exactly where I'm going to be going. However, I do not plan on visiting either tile. I'm going to be going with Leaf to the church, because there is a specific unit you cannot recruit unless you save this village and all of the villagers, and you keep them from being burnt down by these bandits up here, and uh, you visit the church with Leaf. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Also, we need Marita to talk with a certain unit who is going to reinforce up here around turn 11, I believe. Um, so there's that. The Sale is the boss here, and he's quite a nuisance. He can easily wipe out um, any one of your units if you're not careful, especially units that have the capacity to uh, damage him or, or be damaged by him quite well. Um, let's rescue you. And, of course, we're going to dance. Etta can go up here and drop Leaf. And then we can uh, dismount with Nana and rescue her. And we can move here with Marita and rescue her. As well as that we're also going to get Linowin and Laura ready to be rescued also. Uh, we can move our full range of movement with these units, both on the right and left. And that's our turn. You do have to deal with continual reinforcements for many turns from those three forts to the north. So this chapter is not as immediately straightforward as you would think. However, you can, if you want to just avoid this all, fly a flyer over to one of the two arrows and just bypass everything here. You don't have to deal with this entire chapter. It's, 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 it's easier to do than you would immediately think. You could even just warp Leaf up to the church and finish the chapter that way and just be done completely in one turn it was good good seeing you bishop though i wish it were under better circumstances you'll watch over the children i trust of course my lady they'll be most safe here the empire has no reason to come all this way through the mountains for one poor village truth be told i'm most glad to dedicate my final years to raising these children but what of you lady amalda will you be all right if the Empire learns of what you are done here, I shudder to think of what terrible fate would befall you. I feel no fear, only shame. Shame that, even as a proud knight of House Frege, I can only help these children in secret. With each passing day, more and more are taken captive and sent to Valhalla. I can only save but a handful. 
Each time His Majesty grants me an audience, I try to convince him that going along with these child hunts is a grave mistake. But time and time again, he simply refuses to listen to reason. And now I'm in command of a whole division. How can I lead my men when I don't even believe in our own orders myself? I do understand how you must feel, Lady Imelda, but you mustn't let yourself get careless. Father Shroff, I can't just... Without you, we'd have no way of helping the captive children at all. We'd be reduced from rescuing a handful to rescuing none. Think of how many more lives we have yet to save before throwing your own away. You're right. Thank you for your counsel, Father Shroff. I'll do as you advise. She walks a hard road, that one. Would that our own way was easier. Yet for all that we do, the world is still all crumbling to pieces all around us. We can do naught but pray as it collapses. Perhaps. But I know what I heard at the Tower of Braggy. When the three lights converge as one, darkness shall be banished from the living world. The voice of Father Claude, long since dead and buried. I'm sure it was him. He asked a service of me, saying, O righteous man, servant of Braggy, do what I cannot. Be my eyes. Look upon your world and tell me what it has become. Hmm. I understand. You're meant for greater things than raising a few toddlers in a remote village. Go embark on this journey. The good Lord have has charged you with. Worry not. I'll care for the, the children. Thank you, Bishop. Please forgive my selfishness. I am deeply sorry I cannot stay. Bishop, we got a big problem on our hands. A pack of bandits are closing in on the village. Uh, how can that be? We have nothing of value. Guess they got their reasons, because I just saw them headed this way with my own two eyes. That woman you were talking with, the knight, she says she's going to help fight them off. But with just the two of us, I don't know how long we can hold them back. You best take all the women and children and hightail it out of here. Will God grant us no respite? Bah! Very well, Ralph. I'll do as you say. You have my apologies. A sellsword defending a poor village for no pay. Your proof that not all good has vanished from the world. We all thank you. Thank destiny, because it seems to have placed me at the right place at the right time. And these green units are going to uh, fight off the army as long as they possibly can. Um, we're not going to necessarily let them do that. Mm, at least for the time being. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and talk, talk to Ralph here. Are you a sellsword hired by the village? Depends what you mean. I'm fighting for the village, but I sure don't remember getting paid by them. Not that I would have taken their gold, even if they had offered me any. Couldn't take coin from the needy. Then why fight on their behalf? I stumbled across this place in the middle of my own little journey, and they lent me a hand. Time to tur return the favor, that's all. Not that it's any business of yours, you little brat. Just who are you supposed to be anyway? Uh, my apologies. I shouldn't have started prying without introducing myself first. I'm Leaf of Leonster. Leaf? Uh, how? Are you THE Leaf the Prince? Talk about being in the right place at the right time. See, I'm Ralph, and I'm much not much more than a lowly sellsword myself. If it's all right with you, Prince, could I join your army? Of course. We could always use more men like you. Though if I may, I'd like to ask you something. Why exactly do you want to join my army? What's your reason? Because I won't put up with living under the Empire's thumb for one moment longer. That good enough of a reason? I can't say that I disagree. So that suffices for me, yes. Ralph, my greatest desire is to free every person suffering under the Empire's tyranny. Do you swear to fight for that cause? Sure do. Leave it to me. And we get Ralph. He is a hero, and a very interesting hero. Uh, Pre-promoted, level 3. Uh, very good bases, very similar to Dagdar, but better in some ways. He's got way better speed. Um, pretty similar in every other aspect. Um, pretty similar strength, skill. Uh, better luck, uh, but his luck isn't really all that great either. Um, decent defense and con, a little bit less HP. Only reason why I'm comparing him to Dagdar is because 
he would technically be considered a growth unit compared to Dagdar. 60% HP, 35% strength, 5% magic, 30% skill, 20% speed, 15% luck, 35% defense and con, and 1% movement. With a follow-up critical modifier of 1, you're not going to see very many criticals from this guy. However, he has some very interesting qualities. Like, for instance, the fact that he has A-rank swords and C-rank axes plus 40, so he's very close to B-rank axes, which is interesting. So he's already far outstripped the benchmarks he needs for axes, and he is at the best sword rank possible. So he's pretty well capable of virtually dealing with everyone on his own, um, and being a great help at that. I don't plan on using him per se, but for the time being in this chapter specifically, we need all the help we can get to deal with sales bandits. And we do also have to be kind of careful um, about where we go with all of our all of our units, just because there are bow units, and we don't want to be destroyed by said bow units. And Edda can go down here and rescue Linowin, and Laura can dance for Edda and get her up there as well. So I do provide a pretty big force up to the center, um, and the reason being for this is because you are going to get continual reinforcements up here, whereas to the right and left, you're not going to get very many reinforcements. So in my humble opinion, it's just all in all better to send more units up into the north but you do have to take advantage of all your flyers in order to do this i was ready and willing to use um whatever stamina drinks i needed in order to get this done and i can't believe how good of a level up that was owen incredible absolutely incredible in fact actually she's pretty well at the con that i would want her to be at um so that's nice um she doesn't mind having about nine con like max you really don't want her having any more than that um but reason being is because with that kind of a constitution um she can easily um wield her preferential sword that she'll be getting at some point um and it's a doozy one of the better ones in the game not the best i would say but it is one of the better ones Finn is only here as backup, as he is already too high of a level, in my humble opinion, to be um, to be worrying about using. Well, he's level 20, uh, and he's not promoted, so he is basically wasted experience points. Okay, we're doing 8 damage here, but we should be attacking 4 times. And we crit anyhow, so that's good. Ooh, fantastic level up. We're getting some great level ups with all of my units currently. And you're just going to keep getting those reinforcements. This chapter is not as hard as it looks. Armalda is, or Amalda is such a good unit. Too bad we don't get her. Getting Ralph is okay, but Amalda would have been, like, quite a bit more nuts. As she is a female paladin with um, sword rank and staff rank. Luckily for us, Olwyn doesn't care about being attacked because she has vantage. So as long as she one-shots, um, she has no issue. And they're just going to keep attacking Amalda. Not sure exactly why they go for her over any of the other units, but sometimes they just will. Maybe it's because she's still a green unit. Wow, missed twice. Impressive. And miss there. Come on and hit. Yes, very nice. Yeah, Olven's getting some decent fire rank just because she doesn't really need thunder rank and... She doesn't really need wind rank either because wind is like the best home in the uh, in all of the wind homes. 
It's one of the best homes in the entire game. Wonders never cease. That band of soldiers has come to the village's rescue. God may yet be merciful. Now, it's high time I return to my own soldiers. Yeah, so Amalda does not stick around. Um, and the reason why is because of, you know, just the story of it all. Um, let's go here and attack with Thunder. Very nice. Good job, Owen. So she lost her Elfire because it it uh, ran out, which doesn't really matter. Um, she's actually pretty close to B-rank in Fire Tomes. Now, she is pre-promoted, so... Uh, Oh, I did not mean to dismount, but oh well. Um, but before, let's see. We're going to move up with Nana and Mount, of course. And Marita as well. Go ahead and join the fray. We need some help up here. Ralph can go back and start visiting these villages too. Strong folk need strong swords, right? I'd say you're sh you sure qualify. Take this as thanks for coming to help us. And an armor slayer. Another one. We don't need you. And I do definitely plan on selling that. By ornery odd. You've really come to help our village? Well, it ain't right for a good deed to go unrewarded. Here, take this spear for your trouble. I'll be honest, I'm a simple man, and I got no way of knowing how valuable it is. Could be worth a king's ransom. Could be worth less than the metal it's made of. <laughs> but it ain't going to any use collecting dust in my attic, that's for sure. <laughs> Hope it helps up. Ends up help being worth something. Killer Lance. Ooh, nice. And visit this final village. Hey there, chum. I've got something just for you. Never you mind how I got a hold of such a thing. Them bandits outside are trying to take what little this village has. That's what matters. Skill ring. And... We can trade that skill ring. Uh, we'll put the sleep on you for the time being because we don't need it. And now she has 10 skill. Yeah, she is definitely not one of those units whom you would want to have um, less than 10 skill. Tina is the only unit in the game that I try to make sure she doesn't get above 10. And that's simply due to the fact that when she has above 10, you can't rely on any kind of misses giving you or granting you more experience points. And that's kind of one of the reasons why she doesn't need Paragon herself, is because her high rank staves, if she misses with them, she just gets tons of experience points. Alright. Yep, Salfina should have literally no problem with any of these guys here. They're, they're kind of gonna just not be able to even hit her. And that's our turn. More reinforcements. Yeah, the only problem with the cost, it works against you. Yeah, these guys, these bandits are going to burn down the church. That's why they uh, just skipped attacking Karen altogether or any of my other units. All right, good job, Selfina. Good job. And that's pretty much the enemy phase. There we go. And Amalda's just going to keep running on up and trying to escape. But with all that being said, I want to thank you for joining me as we continue to conquer Thracia. And why don't you join me next time when we go ahead and choose to go to Nordheim and take the difficult road. If you like my content... 
please upvote and follow or like and subscribe depending on your platform. And while you're at it, have a great and glorious day gaming.